Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself, Amata, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we're going to start things out with the spot of Intel news, where they have a very interesting listing for something regarding Comet Lake. So what we actually have is a Sistoff Sandra listing for a Comet Lake motherboard for a 6-core CPU. And although this is a Sistoff Sandra listing, I have to thank Tom Apisak on Twitter for actually... Um, a alerting me to the existence of this. It was he who tweeted about it, so thank you very much to him. His name you should be very familiar with by this point. He has been behind a lot of really tasty, juicy leaks. So, as I said, this is for a Z490 Comet Lake motherboard. But if we scroll down a little bit, we can see some benchmarks results for Comet Lake itself. So, I'm not going to go too deep into these because this is very early engineering samples that we're seeing being tested here, but you can still get a little peek as well as what's happening, and again, this is the 6-core Comet Lake part. Of course, it does go all the way up to uh, 10 cores and 20 threads. That is not what we're seeing here, unfortunately. It is the lower end skew, but still cool to see some first results. So we also have, interestingly enough, something on user bank benchmark as well. So once again, this is a Comet Lake motherboard we're seeing tested here. I am not going to talk at all about the results here. I don't think you guys need to tell me that user benchmark is not really that great for scores because they devalue any higher core count CPUs. It's pointless to look at the results, to be honest, but it's still nice to see leaks, still nice to see that the engineering samples are out there, they're being tested, they're doing their thing, essentially. But that's it for Intel this video. We actually have some AMD news up next, and we actually have an Ada64 listing to kick things off. So what we see in this particular update, um, which is version 6.20.5300, just rolls right off the tongue that I'm sure you'll agree. We see a few things. We see you know AVXX2 and FMA accelerated 64-bit benchmarks for a Zen 2 Renoir APU, but what I'm really focusing on here today is preliminary support for fourth generation AMD Ryzen desktop CPUs as well as GPU details for the Radeon RX 5500 series. So what does this actually mean, I hear you ask? Well, basically this means that those parts are out there in the wild, once again, being tested. So again, very, very early, and we can't really glean any relevant information from this anyway, but it's still nice to see that their engine sounds are out there, even though we are still, you know, in the glory days of Ryzen 3000, we're still looking forward to Ryzen 4000 with what's going to be happening there. Now, the rumours for Vermeer, which is the rumoured codename for the upcoming series of chips, is apparently going to be coming next year. Again, that is rumoured. Now, we did see confirmation from Lisa Su that 7nm mobile chips will be coming in early 2020, and we'll most likely be seeing those at CES. But for, as for Vermeer, if that is indeed the codename for this, it's probably not going to be until later on in the year, probably in the summertime, that we'll see more information about this particular CPU. But this makes perfect sense to me. It lines up with them already preparing stuff, preliminary support for 8064. It means it's not eons away, I guess is what we can take away from this. But that's not the only AMD thing I have for you today, my friends. No, no, no. We actually have something next regarding Threadripper 3970X. So this CPU has only been launched since yesterday. Just yesterday. Let's just keep that in mind. Tucked under our hats, if you will. And since that time, once again, in a day, it has broken several world records. So according to world records and global ranks at HW Bot, it has broken again numerous world records not just one so we see the fastest overclock frequency for the chip at 5.752 gigahertz and this is across all 32 cores and 64 threads and this was achieved by the overclocker uh, tsake of taiwan hopefully i pronounced that correctly probably not and unsurprisingly, they were using LN2, uh, LN2, sorry, excuse me, cooling and a voltage supply of 1.1 volts. But as I said, there was more than one record broken. So we see W Prime 1024M, 14 seconds and 154 milliseconds by R. Sassanino of Italy. Um, Citibench R11.5MT, 
11.28 points at 54.50 megahertz. Um, sorry, the previous result was at 5.559. I do realise I forgot to say. Apologies for that. So that was by Lucky Noob of Indonesia. Uh, GPU PI 1B, 31 seconds and 67 milliseconds at 56.25.5 megahertz by Safe Disk of South Korea. Citibench R20 MT2381 points at 5375 MHz by Alex at Row of Romania. Um, R15 MT1060 72 points at 5525 MHz once again by Safe Disk of South Korea. Um, R15 Extreme 2362 points at 4468 MHz by Keep Hating of the US. And then the same overclocker again on Cinebench R11.5 MT, 81.04 points at 51.99 MHz. And then finally another entry um, from Safe Disk of South Korea, Geekbench 3 Multicore, um, 185,114, sorry, 1114, that's what I meant to say. 185114, there we go, words are hard apparently guys, at 55.25 MHz once again by Safe Disk. So, safe to say, AMD are very, very, very happy with this, because the list just goes on and on and on, like we see another 13 results going on for Threadripper here, so if you want to skip forward a minute, I wouldn't blame you, I wouldn't hold it against you, but for the sake of completeness, let's go through them. So... R20MT 24049 points at 5500 by Hokkaido of Hong Kong. Uh, Cinebench 03MT 6184 points at 5182 MHz by Keep Hating of the US. Um, next one is Safe Disk of South Korea again. R15MT 10672 points at 5525. Uh, GPU PI version 3.3 100M 2 seconds and 838 milliseconds at 4400.1 megahertz by Keep Hating again. Uh, GPU PI same version but 1B this time 37 seconds 747 milliseconds at 4400.1. Uh, HW Bot X265 1080p 290.214 FPS at 5360 megahertz by Alex at Row once again of Romania. HW Bot X25 4K 68.936 FPS at 5260 MHz. Once again, uh, this is Lucky Noob of Indonesia. Uh, y Cruncher Pi 25M 468 uh, milliseconds at 4000 MHz. Once again, by Keep Hating. Um, y Cruncher again, Pi 1B this time though, 19 seconds and 302 milliseconds at 417 MHz by Keep Hating. 3D Mark Physics. Um, 20,074 points at 44,468 MHz. Keep hating once again. All of these last results, apart from its final, final one, is this particular overclocker. Um, we see Geekbench 4 MT, 62,483 points at 4,200. Geekbench 3 ST, 6,500 at 5,248. And then finally, finally, Geekbench 3 MT at 183,318. Uh, a 55.2, sorry, 55.25.1 megahertz by our Sassino of Italy. So if you skipped forward, and the TLDR of all of that is Threadripper 3970X has broken an absolute metric ton of world records. Again, 5.72 gigahertz on LN2 cooling, and over 23 points, uh, 23k points, sorry, should I say, in Cinebench R20. I'm gonna go with AMD is pretty happy with those results. So let's move on, shall we, to NVIDIA and the Tesla V100. So what we actually have here is a brand new higher clock speed Tesla V100 being added to the Tesla lineup. So this is basically a amped up version of the V100. It has a higher core clock frequency and faster HBM2 memory. By default, it has 32 gigs of memory which was only an option for the original V100 at 16 gigs um, otherwise. However, it is naturally still on the Volta architecture and is a 12nm GPU. And for those of you keeping score, this is the sixth, yes I said the sixth variant of the V100. And we may see yet more variation upon this higher clock speed card. For those of you wondering how much this would actually hurt you to actually purchase, well, unfortunately there's no word on price, but the V100, the vanilla one, not the S, is roughly 5,800 US dollars. 
so we can probably expect to this be at least in the low 6,000 range, but that is pure speculation on my part. So let's move on, shall we, to our final topic of today, which is regarding some very interesting comments from Phil Spencer, Xbox, and VR. Now, you may recall not that long ago, there was some speculation going around whether or not Microsoft would actually be looking for VR headset as an option for the Xbox Scarlet. Obviously, Microsoft has not entered this race at all. They have gone for... Um, sort of AR thing instead, and obviously HoloLens is not a consumer level product, at least at the moment, and not for the foreseeable future, as I've said many times now. And again, there's just been a lot of speculation, because Sony has seen a fair bit of success with the PSVR, it is arguably the most accessible VR headset out of the ones available. Now, according to Phil Spencer, in an interview with Stevivore, VR is not going to play a significant role on the Project Scarlet. So, it seems like he's not really that keen on VR as a concept as well, at least at its current state. And here's what he had to say. He said, quote, I have some issues with VR. It's isolating, and I think of games as communal, kind of together experience. We're responding to what our customers are asking for, and nobody's asking for VR. The vast majority of our customers know if they want a VR experiences, there's places to go get those. We see the volumes of those on PC and other places. And unsurprisingly, out of quote now, the lack of killer games and probably the less than amazing sales they've seen on VR games is probably not doing much to make them willing to spend their time on research and development and marketing and everything else that would go alongside it. Because he said, quote, nobody's selling million, millions of units. I think we might get there eventually, but yeah, it's not where our focus is. So he's not saying we're never going to do VR. He just doesn't seem that thrilled with it in its current state. It's obviously not what they want for Xbox at the moment. Maybe they'll change their mind and they'll bring one out later on, but I think if Microsoft do go into these waters, we're going to have to see it become a lot cheaper for the consumer, a lot cheaper to produce for the manufacturer, of course, and a lot cheaper to research, develop, etc, 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 to make it worth it to really get that mass appeal, because, you know, it's going to be an expensive endeavour. And I don't blame Microsoft for being a bit hesitant, because as much as I trumpet VR and say that I feel like it still has the potentiality to be really, really cool, it just has not made a splash at all. And it's down to a lot of other issues that I've discovered, uh, discussed sorry, numerous times. I'm not going to it here. So for those of you, any of you watching, were crossing your fingers and toes open for VR on Xbox, at least at the moment. Doesn't look like it's on the cards. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.